Putting your GM cap on, what do you think about the DAC contract? Obviously, he becomes the first guy to make 60 plus million, you know, over the course of a season. But do you think that is something that the Cowboys had to do? And do you think they're worried at all about the, you know, prospect of paying DAC, CD, and soon to be Micah Parsons a large portion of their cap over the next few years? Well, Connor, look, I'll tell you, having good players is, a, is not a problem. All right. <laughs> That's not a problem. The problem is when you don't have good players. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, look, they have to figure out how to do it. I think when you look at a lot of these contracts that have come through in the last year or two, uh, at quarterback, at wide receiver, at cornerback, at pass rusher, even a defensive tackle, um, I think what really what a lot of these teams are looking at is the cap going up. And so two years from now, those contracts, they look high today, but two years from now, you know, they'll, they'll look, you know, pretty, probably pretty good compared to what some other guys are getting. I think when you look at what Prescott does, for his team and, and what he's been able to accomplish, the consistency over his career, when you compare what he's making to what some other guys who are making maybe a little less than him, but kind of in that same ballpark, um, you know, I think the Cowboys are pretty happy with who they have. And uh, I think you got to give Jerry and, and Steven a lot of credit for uh, the way they've managed the team. And look, the only way you can have a good team when you have players like C.D. Lamb and Prescott and Parsons and guys like that is you got to find some other guys that are that are pretty good too, and they did a great job in the kicking game coming up with Aubrey oh. and uh, and uh, Turpin. Uh, those are two of the best players in the league at their position. They give up nothing for them, and so when you have two elite players at as a returner and as a as a, a field goal kicker that you basically gave up nothing for, and, and they're you know minimal charge on the salary cap. Well, that's how you afford the Dak Prescotts, and that's how you afford the. You know, the CD Lambs. You got to get guys like that, and you know this guy. I mean, I would not kick it to this guy. I'll say that yep. right now. I, I would. So fair. Pat, if you were punting for me, I'd say, look, either you get the ball out of bounds, all right, or you know we're going to go for it on fourth down. I want to see this. Guy. <laughs> we're going to go for it on fourth down. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he he broke the one, but I mean, he was close on about three other ones too. Yeah. Like, I would not kick the ball to Turpin. I'm mean, now look, Corey's not a good, you know, he's not a good directional kicker, so it is what it is, but. I mean, that guy is just way too dangerous to put the ball in his hands. Bahorquez is who he was talking about, the punter. He has a massive leg. A When he connects on one, it is <laughs> nuclear. But in Cleveland, with it windy, are you going to connect 100% every single time? And then you give – that one didn't turn over. He didn't like it at all. And as soon as Turpin – these returners, as soon as they see it off the foot, they know if they have a chance or not. And when you're blocking for a guy like him, you're giving extra effort too because they think he can go every single time. That boosts the entire sideline, the oh, entire yeah. locker room. A, oh. a touchdown in the return game is – Vital. I mean, it is a game winner. I, don't, I forget what the percentage is, but it's like yeah. 75% or something like that. I forget what it is. You win the game. You steal possession. Yeah, you don't have to do anything. Yeah, it's bonus points. Like, you can't ever go into the game and think, well, right, we're going to score seven points on a punt return or a block punt or something like that or an interception return. You can't count on that. But when it happens, it's seven bonus points or, or however many times it happens. Those are just... Those are extra points that, that you don't count on. I mean, you're happy when they happen, but you can't go into a game and think, well, I'm going to score you know, on a 90-yard punt return. Like That's just unrealistic. But when you get that, that's seven bonus points that, you know, as long as you don't give them back, the other team doesn't have. Seemingly crazy morning yesterday, Chef. And obviously <laughs> a big part of that was uh, Dak getting paid. Obviously a bunch of storylines all offseason long. C.D. Lamb, Dak. Mike McCarthy, is he next? And then what went into Dak getting this uh, record-breaking deal right before kickoff? Well, we've seen that Dallas doesn't exactly rush to get these things done. They get C.D. Lamb done with basically uh, 10 days to go until the start of the season, and then they get Dak done a few hours before the start of the season. And the two sides were talking. And there really was one of those artificial deadlines that was in place that once the season began – they were going to table it, and Dak didn't want to do a deal. And so you were right up against that. And the numbers get to a certain point where you're talking about $240 million, the first $60 million you put. Like, what, 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 what are we waiting for? Like, And, and not only that, you're in Texas. It's a no-tax state. Like, get the deal done. Texas. Right? And, and, that, and they wanted to keep him, and he wanted to be there. So they were able to figure out. Now, Mike McCarthy is interesting because he's in the last year of his deal. And Dak is a big Mike McCarthy supporter. And I always thought okay. that one of the elements here that would slow down talks for Dak was if you're giving up the next five years of your career, roughly, 
You want to be with somebody that you really feel strongly about, that you have a conviction on. And if you're re-signing with Dallas, you don't really know who's going to be the guy because Mike McCarthy and the rest of the coaching staff is in the last year. So I think, again, they're going to judge Mike over the course of the season, but I think that this bodes well for Mike. Dak is a big Mike McCarthy supporter. Big. They've won 36 games, 37 now, the past three years in one game. I know they struggled in the playoffs, but this team has been a good team, and they haven't gotten it done when it's mattered, and it's time to try to go do that. But they've played well when it has been the regular season and racked up pretty good numbers and performances. And I, I think if you ask Dak, I would think if Dak were being 100% truthful, he would say he absolutely wants Mike McCarthy back as his head coach. Him being able to get $1 million more than the biggest guarantee in the history of the NFL and then get $60 million re-signing with his team, imagine what that free agency market would have looked like oh, for him. Man. <laughs> they, could you imagine? what it yeah. would, He got that, Trust what we I thought was going to be in free agency, just with an extension before the season starts. Let, say he has a great year this year. Him and McCarthy both. Mm -hmm. They just have a good year. And then they do have a little bit of success in the playoffs. I'm not going to get crazy and say they win the Super Bowl. Let's say they do that. That market in the free eight, they're at 61 already. Think about what it will. Oh, oh my. Oh, good huge. for Dak. Hey, congrats, Dak. You've earned it. Oh, yeah, Dak. I love, love how he played it, too. How he, how he yeah. you know, handled it privately, said all the right things, even mm -hmm. made some. Hey, I'm not, I don't pay attention to anything Jerry says. In public. I mean, what are <laughs> you talking about? I haven't done that for you. What is it? What's the news? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. Come on. No, 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 no. Daniel Jones update. <laughs> oh, All right, so they really want to let people know. The guys start. Hey, we're not cutting them. Okay, well, you, you, you watch Hard Knocks in the offseason, okay? We got rid of everybody. Poor this guy. Okay, not just one bad week, even though it's been a few years, and it's a lot of money. It's a big part of our salary cap. Yeah. Do you see what Russell was? Hey, and, and, you know, the good thing is, at least he's playing in a calm media market where the fans take these things <laughs> yeah. and drive. That's yeah, the good thing. Yeah, certainly. Yeah.